section 12.2, arithmetic sequence. So let's just take a look at a sequence. Now, one thing you probably catch about this sequence right away is that you could actually continue it. So you know the next one then would be 34 and then uh, 39. So you see the pattern. A lot of times we're really good at picking up those patterns. But what we're going to do is we're going to see the mechanics of all of this. So now what I mean by that is notice what's happening here. Essentially, I'm taking and I'm adding 5 to get the next one. And then I do it again. And then I do it again. And th So you kind of notice I just add 5 every time to get the next one. Now the idea I want to develop here is actually a formula for this. So we can do it all together without much thought. So look at this first one here. This first one is called A1. Second is A2. A3. A4. All the way to A6. And we keep going. So I wanted to kind of point this out to you now because I'm thinking of generating this formula. So now if we look at A1, we'll call it, it's 4 actually. So I'm going to write 4 there. Now if I wanted to find A2, I would take that 4 plus 5 and I would get 9. And that would be my A2. Okay, and I'll write equals A1 for this one. Now I'm going to do the next one. So the next one would be 4 times, or 4, and that's because that's the first one, plus. Now I'm just looking at the top here, because I always want to just go from the first. Because if I want to get to A3, which is here, okay, I'm going to have to add 5 twice. Okay, and that would get me to A3. So I'm going to say 5 times 2, because I need two of them. And that's going to give me that 14, and that equals my A3. So now I'm going to go to A4, which is here. So I'm going to have to take the 4, and I'm going to have to add 5 how many times? Let's take a look. So to get to A4, I'm going to have to add 5 three times. So this is going to be 5 times 3. And that's going to be 19, which equals A4. Now, when I do the fifth one, that's going to be 4 plus 5 times 4. So I'm going to have to do five fours. Because you think about it, here's A5, and how many do I need to get there? I need four of them. All right, and that's going to be 24, and that equals A5. So then I'm just going to do it one more time, but I'm not going to go up to the top here. This is just plus 5, and that should be to the 5th. And that would be 29, which equals A6. Now remember, when we're making our formula here, when we see this A3 here, for instance, that means I'm going to have to plug in 3 for N for my formula. Okay, now I look over here, and I don't see where any 3 is at, because there's not a 3 there, is there? But think about what I'm doing here. So for instance, if I pick this three, what did I really do? I really added two fives. So now when I generate my formula for n here, okay, let's say I was going dot, dot, dot. Now I want four plus five. Now this number, if it was n, then when I talked about that a three here, that would have to be a three there. Okay, so it's not an N, but if you notice my number difference here, it's a one difference, isn't it? So that means it's going to be N minus one, and that's gonna equal my A sub N. So now take a look at that. Now look at that for each of these. So let's say I had A five, and an N minus one would be four. Take a look at that, and that would work for each of these. So that's kind of the nice thing about this. So this is my formula that I could actually use here. So now to simplify this formula, it would be a n oops, equals, and then when I multiply this through here, that's going to be 5n minus 5. So it's going to be 
five n minus one. And that's what our formula would be for this one here. So again, I use this formula here, but I still have to simplify my a sub n. And that would be the formula for this problem here. Now, um, if we were gonna write this sequence formally, I would write that, so I'd write it formally. Um, this would be the formula on the a sub n term. This here would be the sequence. And now notice this, my a sub n here is what I actually put inside of that sequence. Uh, brackets. So now let's take a look at the definition. So here's the definition. An ar arithmetic sequence may be defined recursively as a1 equals a. And if you look down here, this says a n minus a n minus 1. So now if I take any two of these and I subtract them, I'm going to get this 5 here. And that 5 I'm adding across all of those is what this D is here. Okay, just so you know that D you see here is that number I'm adding to each of those to get the next one. Um, so just keep that in mind here. And the a n minus the n minus 1 um, is going to equal that D. So that means if I take any two of these terms, as long as they're consecutive, and I subtract it, that number I get is always going to be 5. And that's what I can do to find that D. And they're here, they're just giving me the formula for it. And this is just a recursive formula here. Now, the formula I have down here is the formula that's going to be more of the explicit formula. This one here, I mean. Not the one below that, but that one. This one here is the way I'm going to find it. And that'll work for any of these sequences. Now, sequences that are arithmetic, that's the formula I'm going to use to get the formula explicitly. So let's try that for the next one. But before we do, let's generalize this formula. So for this one, it was 4. So maybe for this formula here, if I want to generalize it, I can say a1. So then I can say a1 plus, and then the 5 is really the d. So I can say d, because that's my uh, number I'm adding to each of those. And then here I can write n minus 1, and that would equal a n. So now this is the formula that we could actually carry through for any of the arithmetic sequences. And notice what this is here. When I read the rest of this definition, um, a1 equals a, a n equals a n minus 1 plus d. And if we go below where a1 and a and d are real numbers, and also the number a is the first term, and that's what we called a1 here. And the term d is called the common difference. And that's what the d means here. This d they put here means common difference. Difference, that's where it comes from. So anyways, with this formula, I think we could do this for any of these problems that are arithmetic sequences. If we wanted to find the explicit formula, so then we can write it as a sequence. So real quick here, take a look at this sequence. All we're going to do is come up with the explicit form for this so that we can find any n we want. So if you notice right away, this is still a difference here. What's that difference going to be? Hopefully you noticed it was 7 right away. We're adding 7. I should have did a minus 7. That would have been fun. But anyways, I did a plus 7 here. So now we know 7 is the D. So then for a formula here, that would be a1, my a1 is 2, because that's my first term. Remember, this is a1, a2, a3, a4. 
Uh, A5, that looks like an N, but it's a four. So anyways, that's how these are set up. So my A1 is two. So two plus the D here is seven. And if that was a negative seven, we could put a minus seven there or plus a negative seven. And then N minus one, and that's gonna equal my A sub N. Now remember, if we find the A sub N, then we can set it up uh, my sequence in its explicit form. So now let's take a look at this. Oh. So now when I simplify this, this is really gonna be two plus seven n minus seven equals a sub n. And then this is really gonna be a sub n equals seven n minus five. And then when I wanna write my sequence here, my sequence is gonna be that seven n minus five n equals one. To infinity. So it's very simple um, once I have my handy dandy formula here to help me through this problem. So there's my other sequence in its explicit form.